Hey, it's Joseph here. Today we are doing an update on Surface Book 2. I have reviewed this laptop against architectural workflow in a recent video. However, I wanted to do an update because there are a few things that I have said wrong about this laptop, especially the VR aspect of it. And also I kind of wanted to give you more information on accessories and tips and tricks about Surface Book 2 that is applicable for anyone who's using this laptop. So that is the reason for this video let's get going the reason why I really wanted to do this update was because I have concluded this laptop to be not suitable for VR workflow and I have done a bunch of different testing to make VR work on this laptop and I just couldn't get it to work I thought it was either the graphics card or the CPU is configured to behave in certain way on USB-C port and it becomes a bottleneck and I've tried a bunch of different USB-C hubs like the and the one that is connected right now and to see if it gives me any different result but I had significant amount of stutters in the imaging of the headset I just couldn't get rid of it therefore I decided to conclude this laptop as not really suitable for VR workflow but just thinking back by the spec GTX 1060 really should be suitable for moderate VR use and I just couldn't really accept the fact that this laptop is not suitable for VR I really wanted this laptop to work so I dug a little bit further and I have tested my VR headset on my coworkers laptop who has the exact same spec and it actually worked fine with the same configuration and it left me puzzled and I thought it was a unit specific issue so I got a replacement with someone who doesn't really care about VR and I have installed everything that I need to on this laptop and I have realized the stutter is actually back on this laptop so at that point it just kind of left me thinking maybe it is some sort of a driver issue and the first suspect was obviously the Nvidia graphics card driver so I did a bit of research and on reddit there was a thread that it highlights the recent updates of Nvidia graphics driver causes this stutter issue on the mixed reality headsets so you can roll back to 436.48 version so that should actually take care of that stutter issue after installing that I have been been having smooth experience with this laptop so I am happy to report that this is actually suitable with VR workflow and I'm going to show you it actually working by the way I'm gonna put a lot of tasks on this laptop therefore the fan is going to kick around and you're gonna hear a lot of hissing noise that is coming from the fan so forgive me on that but you should still be able to hear my voice so let's get VR headset connected so as always this mixed reality headset is my choice by the way I have purchased oculus quest and I'm expecting a lot of good things about it because there's oculus quest link I'll get into that later perhaps as part of unboxing video later on but for now I'm gonna use this headset so I need to get the cable connected and the other end is actually USB 3 port and HDMI and I also have this USB C hub from Vava I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested in purchasing this this as well it has USB 3 and bunch of other ports to connect along with HDMI and Ethernet port so I'm gonna connect my USB 3 on there make sure you connect to USB 3 port not the USB 2.0 and I'm gonna connect HDMI like so and then I actually have power delivery USB C that is connected to the desk so I'm gonna connect it to here so this way the laptop is powered through the power delivery port and have everything connected via USB-C so it's a lot of things connected last video I couldn't get the screen recording working but I have figured out how so I'll get into that in a bit but also I'm gonna get the screen recording going as well so you should see my screen now and you can see that my CPU and GPU is just kicking in you can kind of monitor the temperature on the right as well so this can kind of go up to really high temperature so expect a lot of fan noise to kick in soon but you can see that I am recording my screen here I'm gonna minimize that and then show you the mixed reality kicked in already since I have connected everything I'm gonna do a preview it's asking me to put on my headset so actually I don't really need the controllers because for this experience I can just use my mouse instead so you can also see that everything is showing just fine on the screen I'm not experiencing any sort of stutter at all 
and before I used to have a lot of stutters and I just couldn't really focus on any sort of image. So I'm gonna get one of the model loaded as a tester. And as you can see, the CPU is working very hard. It's at 100%. And as soon as this model has loaded, I'm gonna kick it into start Enscape. And I'm gonna keep the screen a bit small so it is not bogging down the computer too much. Here, I'm gonna click on this VR headset and that should kick everything into VR mode. Let me just increase a little bit more. So as you can see here, that is tracking my head now and I can use my mouse to kind of pan around if I wish to and then use a keyboard to go front. So there you go, the walk mode and I can actually walk around and even follow up the staircase. So there you go. Um, I am not experiencing any stutter whatsoever and everything is very smooth. So there is my proof. It works very well. And if you also seen a screen recording, that means I was successfully able to screen record off of this computer as well, even whilst doing VR tasks. So let me put this laptop out of its misery by closing a couple of elements. So if you plan on doing VR, make sure you have Nvidia graphics driver that is 436.48 version. And I'm sure Nvidia will soon address this issue, but it's been there for almost two months now and there was a release on December 10th and that still doesn't address this issue so with VR out of the way my laptop is now is sort of settling all the fans are lowering down and I'm gonna unplug the VR and get it out of the way and by the way if this laptop is computing a lot of things it's gonna draw more power than this USB-C or even the original charger is connected it's gonna consume more power than what the chargers can provide therefore your battery will drain very slowly and that's what I have experienced here so I'm gonna keep things connected for the duration of this video anyways the next item that I wanted to talk about was the glossiness of the screen and because I have swapped this machine to a new one it is no longer having that matte screen protector that I have put on to the other one that I have reviewed and I wanted to show you how much of a reflection that this laptop has you can see see quite a lot of reflection on the glass. I'm gonna get some light onto the screen and as you can see it's almost like a mirror. So without the screen protector you're gonna have significant amount of reflection and because of that I put matte screen protector on here and it actually improves the inking experience as well and because on the glossy screen my palm tends to kind of stick on it whereas if it's sort of a matte finish it'll kind of glide over just like a paper and because of that I I have purchased another screen protector to use. I still haven't applied just because I wanted to show you how glossy this is. And I also promised you that I'll show you how I got OBS working. And because this laptop has two different GPU nodes, one as part of CPU and the one that is discrete on this body here. And often Windows gets confused which graphics card it's going to dedicate for specific software. And OBS was the case and there are a couple of options that are similarly named to which one to use but none of them kind of worked until I found this option inside of Windows so what you need to do is hit window key once so that you can search something and graphic GRA and graphic settings should really pop up at that point I can go in there by hitting enter and graphic settings should pop up and it's gonna say graphics performance preference and there's gonna be classic app and browse button I already have assigned OBS studio as power saving therefore it uses the CPU and that's the only way you can get screen recording going and if I don't and basically the screen recording section will appear as dark so what you need to do is go to classic app browse once you find the exe file of OBS studio or any other application or software that is giving you trouble of and then you can click on it and you can set options and you can set to system default versus power saving and high performance high performance basically means a discrete graphics card power saving is one that is going to use integrated graphics of CPU and then that should allow OBS to start screen recording 
party. And then the next item that I wanted to discuss about was the pen. I actually have another pen here. The original pen tip that it comes with, if you ever drop it, and there's actually very thin plastic around the rubber tip. And because this pen is quite heavy, when you drop it by the tip, the rubber is gonna push against the plastic tip and burst through, therefore the plastic will crack. And only way to fix that is actually order another tip set that you can order from Amazon or Microsoft's website. And then there's a pen removal tool, which is basically, it just pinches to the tip and then pulls it out. And you can replace with the same one or a few other pen tips. And the other one is actually fat plastic one. And I actually prefer that when I have a matte screen protector and it actually runs a lot better than the rubber. I don't really like the rubber feeling running up against the matte finish. So I prefer the plastic one and this one is actually quite easy to remove. So there is a pen tip that is going to come out of here and then you can just push that in and it can start to work. Only caveat is Surface Book 2, you have to purchase this separately. It's about 100 bucks. But currently with the glossy screen, I'll use a rubber and once I put on the screen protector that is matte finish, I'll probably revert back to the plastic tip that I like to use. And since I have mentioned Surface Pro 4, that has been my daily go-to for a very long time. I actually have purchased this one when it was first released. I got it as a pre-order and I've been using it since. Unfortunately, I have written some stuff on a type cover and it is going to be quite difficult to sell this out on eBay because of this. I can actually sell without the type cover, but where's value in that? So I don't really know what to do with this unit, but it even has a skin on the back to prevent any scratches happening. So it's been nicely kept and it still runs very well. I use it time to time, but I've been trying to focus all the workload on Surface Book 2. And then there's the next item I wanted to mention, which is Surface Connect to USB-C port. So I was able to get this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to purchase if you're interested in. Basically, it accepts USB-C port on one end and the other end is called Surface Connect, which is basically the charging port of Surface devices. And whilst you can purchase Surface Dock, which is about $150 and I find it too expensive and it can actually transfer data, but this cable does not carry any data whatsoever. It just charges. However, sometimes that is a big saver since I have only one USB-C port and sometimes that can be kind of bottleneck depending on what sort of hub you have and the hub may not work. I've seen some weird cases where the hub won't really work with power delivery, although it has it. I think it still has that issue of bandwidth since it is not really Thunderbolt. And because of that, this works much more reliably. And I have tested this on my Surface Pro 4 and it works fine. So I can take USB-C port like this one here and then connect to this end here. And just like how you would use the original charger, you just put it up against it and it just snaps onto its position and it will actually light up as well. So from there, I can easily connect and it just snaps in and then it lights up as well. That is sort of the MagSafe version of USB-C and it works. And this was only 15 bucks and I really like this one here because it's quite versatile and it frees up my USB-C port and I can easily connect to charging. And here's another neat trick that I have up in my sleeve is actually SD card. Surface Book 2 actually has full-size SD card reader which is very nice and you can use that if you're a content creator or photographer you're going to use SD card regularly but if you wish to just kind of expand your storage you can leave one large SD card in there and use it as sort of a storage expansion. However it doesn't really go in all the way it sticks out about this much and as you put it in the bag or laptop sleeve it's going to stick out that much and actually learn this trick from macbook air days and it also has the same exact size and depth of sd card reader and i just learned this hack off of online and it completely works for the surface book as well
well. Although I have a two terabytes of storage, therefore I'm not really going to need extra storage. But if you need extra storage, this is what you can do. I have removed the sticker because notice how this is slightly shorter than regular SD card. I'm gonna bring the regular SD card and compare it to you. So this is regular size SD card. And then this one is the one that I have kind of hacked. So you can see how shorter it is. And if I were to measure it, the total length of it is about 7 8 of an inch. And 7 8 of an inch will stick out just enough for you to grab it. So if I put it into the side, it protrudes out very little. Whereas if I were to put regular size SD card, it'll protrude out that much and you don't want to stick that into your bag. You can actually purchase this kind of SD card off of Amazon as well that is purposely made for Surface Book and it even has the same type of finish on the back so that it just fills in the hole and you can just grab it with a little pin set or something. But this is more economical when you're just needing storage, you can do this. How can I cut a SD card without ruining it? Turns out actual storage element of SD card is about only one third of the way. And you can confirm this by putting your smartphone and turn on the flashlight and just put the SD card up against the light. And you can kind of see through the material. And for the area where the chip is actually covering, you won't be able to see the light. However, if you're just going through plastic, you can kind of see the light going through and you're basically safe to cut that. And I advise you don't do this on high-end high-speed card that you can potentially ruin I'm not responsible for your wrongdoings however I was able to get this 32 gigabytes without any problem and I can see the same for this 2 gigabyte which is very very old SD card but I can even see through this one if I put it up against bright light and I presume that is exactly why you can make micro SD cards that is about quarter of the full-size SD card and still have have exact same storage and speed rating. So I just cut this one with Zacto knife and just cut a little notch on either side so I can grab it and that's all you need to do and it'll just work. So hopefully that was a useful update and sort of tips and tricks of Surface Book 2 session and if you found it useful please like this video and subscribe to my channel for contents like this and thank you so much for watching as always I'll see you next time. Bye!